What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. I know it's been three weeks since the last upload. I've been away on holiday for a week and I've got back and things have just been a little bit manic so you're gonna have to bear with me unfortunately. Uh, today working on the Les Paul. Um, what I want to do today in this video is get two layers of headstock veneer glued to the headstock. I want to do my headstock inlay and I want to get the final neck fitting to the body so that maybe, maybe in this video we can actually glue the neck to the body as well. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking. There's a lot to get on with. So I've got some of the headstock veneer and right now my headstock thickness is at 13.5 with one layer of veneer. It will be 14.2, which is actually quite close to the original dimensions. I think it's 14.5, but because of our truss rod mishap, I'm gonna to have to do two layers of veneer, which is gonna bring it up to 15.1, and um, Hopefully okay, that's going to be all right there. The main issue that I have is that the truss rod nut is extending, well actually probably more than two millimetres out, um, which is going to cause me some problems. It's actually more like, well it's just over two millimetres so whatever truss rod cover I put on, I'm going to have to just carve away a little bit of the inside. Which is not ideal, um, it would have been better if I didn't make the mistake in the first place, but there we go. So to make this easier for when I have to scrape the veneer off, I'm going to roughly cut out the shape of the headstock on there, use some pins for alignment so that nothing moves and then get that glued up. There we go. Let's see how that fits. <clears throat> Find out pretty quick if that's going to work. Okay, cool, on to the second one. When I stack these on top of here, I would just like this area in here just to look a little bit neater. So I'm just going to quickly carve a little bit of that away. Thank you. 
there we go that's much better much neater and <clears throat> I didn't really need to do that but I did at the same time next up I've got to find a way to keep these in the right place so my headstock shape is actually slightly different but that's all right mark out the tuner holes use one of those two of those for I'm going to be doing that I don't think this pencil really fits in there but it will give me location of where I can do that. Got that guy now. Now how am I going to glue these together without having the same problem that I had last time? pretty good. Now do I, no I'm not going to trim that back to later on, my nut is not going to be mega wide on there. So I'm going to use that, I'm going to use my clamping call, which to begin with I'm going to have to put some holes in. I think that's the calmest, most stress-free glue up I've ever had. So, here's hoping it <clears throat> comes out all right. And I'm not even gonna touch any of the glue squeeze out. Just gonna leave it as it is. So, hopefully in five seconds, I'll find out how good it is. But it is the time to see okay that is not too bad not too bad so a little bit of squeeze out where there was no pressure on the template. That's not too bad. We'll scrape that off. We'll let that fully dry. We're going to sand this back a little bit and um, 
that looks pretty good. All the edges, as far as I can tell, look pretty good with a very small amount of squeeze out. And the truss rod cavity section also looks pretty good. We've got a little bit of squeeze out just at the front there. Um, but overall, I'm quite pleased with that. So what's happened is on some of these areas where there was no clamping pressure the fibres of the veneer are coming up a little bit when I'm scraping that glue off. So I've got two choices, I could just wait for it to fully dry another 24 hours or I could just carry on anyway and only just lightly sand it because this is going to be the areas I'm going to be drilling the tuna holes anyway. So. Yeah, just a little not sure about that one. these parts out I'm just going to use a fresh scalpel blade very very easy leaving a little bit of room I'm about two to three millimetres away from the perimeter, so sandpaper on this and just edge up to it, I think. I've got this kind of roughed in now. Still a little bit of work to do, I think, on the final shaping around the volute and a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to work on getting my headstock to the open book shape. And there's not really a lot of material to take away. It's just that kind of central piece. Um, I don't think it's going to be mega easy. And I need to definitely put some kind of tape on there. And so that's, that's the only part I really want to take away there. It's just very, very small.
I think that looks pretty good so far. So that's cool, gonna leave that. I think that's finally shaped. We've just got a few bits to sand around the place, so that's cool, we'll do that on the final sanding. Next, I feel like some of these edges on the side of the neck to headstock transition feel a little flared out on the back, so I'm just gonna cut those in a little bit with the files and hopefully that's going to be most of the headstock shaping complete. I think that's pretty cool now, that transition. Quite happy with the way that that looks, and the way that it feels. This is that refinement, you know, that I really want. I mean, I'm never gonna be holding the neck that far back, but in case if I am, you know, it's got, it's got a nice feel to it. It's definitely, skinny next looking really straight there dead straight there so I just want to make sure that my profiling is pretty much where I want it to be um, and then I can do a bit more sanding on the back of the veneer because there's a little bit of work to do there. The front of the veneer is already looking pretty good. So some sanding on the back. I need to cut my nut slot and yeah then I'm pretty much ready to then I'm pretty much ready to do the inlay. Before I do the inlay though I think I need to drill the tuna hole so I know exactly where I'm lining everything up and then it will be on to neck fitting. See, things are looking dead flat up until around there, which is the 12th fret. Steadily increased from 20.3 millimeters to, well, the 12th, I think, was 21.6. So a 1.3 millimeter increase.
got six holes in the backer. Now this is something I wasn't expecting. The tape has pulled off some of the veneer. Ugh. Wow, that is frustrating. <laughs> that is so annoying. Guess I'll have to glue that back down. And so I've got several there on the back of the headstock. Good guy. On the front. Gotta say, that's looking pretty good. Pretty nice. Spacing looks spot on. Give you some kind of tape, hopefully. The B and Q tape. And I should have tried this on the bit at the back first. Burnish the super glue with sandpaper even before it's dried, and then just sand. Right, this video, yeah, it's, it's a week long affair, really, isn't it? So, I've now sorted out all of the little headstock issues there as much as possible. Still got some sanding and that to do there. On the veneers so that's all good now there's two things that i'm really procrastinating at the moment and one which is the inlay logo which i've still got about another two hours worth of cutting out to do in the mother of pearl and secondly is this kind of final neck fitment it just needs really the finessing um, so i'm gonna try and do that now it's just, I guess, a little daunting because it's already relatively close. Don't want to make it worse. So, yeah, just gonna crack on and see how it goes.
I'm going to think that that is, that's very, very close. Once it's actually glued up, there's going to be, I mean, the tiniest, tiniest of gap and it's 99% even all the way around. I don't really think I can get it any better than this. Um, so I'm going to call that done. Now, other big tasks I still have for the neck is to cut the nut slot body wise. I've got a couple of holes to drill for the strap. I've got the channel switch for my P90. Um, and then I've got the holes to drill for my stop bar and tail piece or for my wraparound bridge. But I'm only going to do that once the neck's fitted so I get that in exactly the right location and then the bridge ground. So I can drill. Uh, a hole going through and then again it's fine sanding till the end. I still though this headstock inlay is daunting me so let's drill some holes and let's do some sanding and cut some slots. That's exactly where it wanted to be. Perfect. Okay. And then we have our hole. Okay. That's exactly where it wanted to be. Perfect. I do have to say that it's a terrifying experience. Now, this here pickup. Just going to cut a channel in there and then down. Like you see on some of the original plans, um, and hopefully that sorts that out. That's, 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 that's a little better. I'm a little bit happier with that. Still not perfect. I think looking at the edges of the pickup, that actually the base plates 
and not fully sitting into their little recesses. Which I think seems a bit weird, to be honest. The pole pieces are sticking out about the right amount. Just not sure. Oh well, anyway, <clears throat> gonna call that done. We'll just give that a quick tidy up with the chisel. So I've completed all those little jobs and I still don't want to go and cut out the inlay. So I think that probably means it's time for a fair whack of sanding. I'm going to do a bunch of sanding now. Let's get this done first. Headstock. Um, I've got here a couple of headstock templates cut out in slightly different sizes and this is the logo. Here is the logo that I'm going to inlay on the headstock. I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully that's focusing. Now it's very very thin and so I printed off a couple of larger versions and I've got this mother of pearl blanks that I got from eBay in China. I think it was about nine pounds for 10 pieces. They're 36 by 19 millimeters. Now, the smallest one, I can get the whole M on one piece and all the other letters on another piece, which is awesome. But at the same time, that makes the characters even thinner. Um, I kind of want to make it as large as, or thick as possible, so that there's more material to work with. But I think what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go with the thin one, and I'm just gonna go outside the line and I'm gonna creep up with the files to do it. Um, this is not going to be easy. I have done this once before with a much, much thicker logo, and it was really, really hard. So here goes nothing. I also don't have a glue stick. Uh, I managed to find some spray mount, so I'm gonna use some spray mount. I'm just gonna pick a couple of the nicest pieces of the mother of pearl that are, well, for a start, flat. Jewelry room that I built for Monica. She's got lots of stuff being made all the time, so I'll try not to make too much of a mess. So, bench pin. This is going to be my bad training experience in here and up come the doggos. Um, a saw. She's going to be mad if she finds out I've just been up here doing all this stuff, snapping her saw blades. So on the pin, we've got that there, this lovely little saw and um, just going to make a start on trying to cut some of this out. Not easy, but let's go. It's always starting off, which is the worst part.
Right, we've almost got all the way around the M. Snap the second blade and time is ticking. I need to go to work. So, pick this up again in like two seconds. I've procrastinated away the best part of four hours yesterday, sanding the body. Well, it's currently about 400 grit, really on the end grain. I still have some scratches to remove, but generally it's feeling very, very nice. So that's sorted. I've also done the same thing to the neck. So yeah, it's about 400-ish. Um, really not any scratches left to remove on the neck. Just a little bit of work required on the front of the headstock for this thing that I keep putting off. Um, so I've done pretty much the final fitting as well of the neck tenon, so that's all really good. So I have to carry on with cutting out the Mother of Pearl logo, which I'm just not looking forward to, really, really not. So I've managed to wangle a bench pin from Monica and we've got this old jeweler's saw and I've got, I actually have no blades, so Monica's um, lent me this pack of super pipe blades and I'm going to be using really the number ones because they're the thickest, the strongest because I'm using quite thick material here, this mother of pearl and uh, th this this is just going to go horribly wrong. Um, I'm already halfway through this M from what I did a few days ago so I'll finish this off first with one of these blades, see how that is and then probably go around one side and then around the other so I've always got like quite a bit of material left and I think it's going to snap if it does snap it's not the end of the world because I can then just do the inlay anyway and put it in place and I'm going to be using the Dremel um, with a router base which I've also never used so it's going to be an interesting experience so I put a blade on get masked up and It'll probably just be a very long time lapse and I'm going to put some music on because I like music. It's good. That might be enough for this session. So, what we need to do is just have a little look and see what this looks like. right on so details details i think i've got a little bit of filing to do at the moment and i think really just refining this edge here 
cleaning up the bottoms of the M and just just a little bit of detail work on the main rest of the uh, the piece and I'm going to leave it here for this video. I've done a lot in this video. I haven't done everything that I've set out. We always strive to be better. Um, but I'm going to leave it here because I need to get this video published. And it's already late as it is. So thank you very much for watching. Please check back in the next video when we're going to be using the Dremel again plus some of the micro burrs and the um the whatchamacallit that i got from crimson the router base and we're going to do the routing for this and we're going to put this inlay in and then we are going to glue the neck to the body that is what we're going to do so yeah thank you very very much please leave a like if you liked it if you want to subscribe and watch along then that would be pretty awesome um, yeah I don't think I'm cutting another one of these out by hand anyway see you later thank you very much